You guys, I know there's a lot of argument about what smart home platform is the best. You have Lady A, which is Alexa. You have Madam G, which is Google Home. You have HomeKit from Apple. You have SmartThings. You have Hubitat. And the list goes on and on. Well, today, I'm going to tell you 10 reasons why you need to switch to HomeKit now. Let's jump into the video. So when I started building my smart home back in 2016, 2017, I always said I wanted to buy products that worked with all three major players just in case if I wanted to switch platforms. And I'm not the type of guy that likes to get locked down by one company. So I had to choose products wisely to make sure they work with these three major players. A new HomeKit was my main platform, but a lot of the things that they had just were awfully expensive or this products didn't exist in that ecosystem. So I either didn't buy it at all or I bought products that worked with all three major players. Yes, these products cost a lot more, but I was willing to spend the extra to make sure I could switch platforms at any time I wanted to. Well, fast forward to today, and you'll notice that a lot of HomeKit products are now much more affordable. There's a bunch of different brands out there like Vocalink, Accor, there's Miras, or they, I think they call it Maris. A lot of these brands are now producing products at affordable prices, so that's no longer an excuse of getting into HomeKit. The products exist, they're a lot more affordable these days, and that leads into my number nine. Rewind just a few years ago, and there was just a handful of brands that actually supported HomeKit products. But now, these days, there are so many different brands and they support so many different products. The choices are unbelievable and it's kind of confusing. And thank God, there's a bunch of honest reviewers out there like myself that are helping you decide which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad. Now, of course, there are some product categories that are still missing from HomeKit. One of the big ones, of course, is uh, robot vacuums. And and one of the other categories that I personally want is more of the like the water shut off valve. So we have all this um, water sensing stuff, but we have no way to natively shut it off if we need to. Now I'm sure there's other categories that I'm not thinking about. So let me know down in the comments what categories and products that you want to see in HomeKit. Now if you're using Lady A or Google as your main platform, I just don't understand the UI or the user interface. On your homepage you have music, you have Artable, you have different skills. I just want to get to my devices that I want to use and find it quickly and easily. It's really a hassle here. For me to find a device, I have to click on devices and then you have to start scrolling. So if you're looking for a group or a room that's called Taylor's Room, T is going to be all the way at the bottom and it's just going to take you forever to get there and then once you're in that room if you have a lot of devices you just start scrolling once again where if you jump over to home kit your home page has all your favorites it has your statuses right there at the top you can see what's going on with your home you can easily jump to any room that you want without any scrolling and then once you're in the room you can see what is going on you can turn on all your devices all without scrolling Apple has simplified this app to make it easy for anyone even if you're not technology friendly you you can go in here, find the device that you want, and still use it. And by far, it is definitely the best user interface out there for any smart home platform. Some people might say it's too simple and there's not a lot of features that are built into it. So this leads into number seven. Advanced users do have other options. They can go into third-party apps where they can set conditions and other criteria for advanced automations. Plus with serious shortcuts, sky is really the limit of what you can do with Apple HomeKit and some imagination. Now local control is great and Apple's HomeKit definitely has that. So if you do happen to lose your internet access, you still have control over your smart home in most aspects. But with Lady A and Google, you have a lot of these skills and routines that are going through third party apps and servers. So if you happen to lose internet, unfortunately you're gonna lose access to these devices. And let's not forget about that speed. In most cases, you're not gonna see a huge difference, but understand that when things are running Running locally it's going to be a lot faster than going out to the internet going to a server jumping servers coming back into the home it's going to just going to be a lot faster if everything's just right here on your home kit hub 
Now let's briefly talk about HomeKit Secure Video. If you have an iCloud account and you're paying for it, you have a 200 gigabyte plan, you're gonna have support for one HomeKit Secure Video. And if you have the two terabyte iCloud account, you're gonna have support up to five HomeKit Secure Video cameras. What this means is that with that price that you're already paying for your iCloud account for files, photos, backups, you're automatically going to get storage for your HomeKit Secure Video cameras. Which means you're not gonna to have to pay additional fees for your HomeKit cameras, it's already built into the iCloud account that you already have. And let's not forget about Apple One. If you bundle all this stuff together, you're gonna to have access to the iCloud Music account, you're gonna have Apple TV Plus, you're gonna have Apple Fitness, and I think there's a couple other things, Apple Arcade, all for one monthly fee. With the Home app, all your devices are gonna to sync together for your smart home. So no matter where you go, if you go in your iPhone, your Apple Watch, your iPad, you go to your MacBook, your Apple TV, your HomeKit accessories are there. You can quickly access them. They're all in the same layout. You can easily find them. And you don't have to worry about going to each device and setting up each one. All right, this next one is super, super important. It's coming in at number three. It should really probably be number one. And that is your privacy and there's no other company in the world that takes your privacy more serious than Apple. We've all heard some pretty bad privacy stories over the years and all these companies, including Apple, and even with Google, if you're not buying the product, you are the product. It means they're selling your data, they're selling your privacy, they're selling things about you you might not even know or really care about, but at the end of the day, it's still your privacy and you have a right not to sell that stuff to a third party. But let's be serious here, even when with Apple, you're not 100% sure what they're doing with the data. You're not sure where it's going or if third party apps are taking that data and then using it. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to what you believe and who you believe. Where I feel that Amazon and Google are not stepping up to the plate in your privacy, but in my mind, Apple's trying their hardest. And at number two is some newer cool stuff and some future stuff that I see coming down the line. And that is ultra wide band, thread, and the chip program, otherwise known as the chip project or project connected over IP. Let's first talk about UWB, otherwise known as ultra wide band. A lot of new Apple devices, including the brand new HomePod mini, has a U1 chip um, or ultra wide band built into it. Even the new phones of the last two, three years all have ultra wide band. And what that's gonna allow things to do within your smart home is to know where it is in the smart home and how close it is to other things within the actual room. Um, say for instance, your HomePod mini is sitting here in my studio. It's going to know where I am because of my phone. And as I walk, come walking into the room, instead of having like a motion sensor or a door sensor, it's going to know that I'm walking into this room because it can tell the difference or how far I am um, from away from this HomePod. And they can even take it one step further where they can tell where you are within the room. So if you sit down on the couch, it knows to automatically turn on the TV or whatever you want to order me. In addition, there's the rumored Apple AirTag that I'm super excited about that supposedly is gonna have ultra wide band in there. So not only is it gonna know where you are because of your phone, it's gonna know where your HomePod is, but it's also gonna know where your AirTags are. We able to ring your AirTag like a tile and make a sound so you're gonna find it. But it can actually take it one step further where when you ask Siri where your backpack is, not only will she be able to ring it, but she can can tell you what room it actually is located in. In addition to ultra wide band in the new HomePod mini, they've also now included thread technology, which is very similar to Zigbee if you guys are big Zigbee fans. But in a nutshell, thread is just a low power, low latency, self healing network that runs alongside of your Wi Fi. It's not part of your Wi Fi, it's a different network. So all your smart home devices can run separately and not bog down your Wi Fi. And there are a handful of devices already on the market from Eve and Nanoleaf that all support this new technology called Thread. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with it. Now Thread and a bunch of other protocols including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Mesh, Zigbee, and a bunch of other protocols all part of this chip project. And it's not just Apple, Amazon and Google are all part of this chip project. Hopefully it leans one day. Just go to the store, pick up any product off the shelf that you 
like, bring it home and know it's gonna work. Number one is that you are an iPhone user. If you're already in the ecosystem, what are you doing messing with Amazon and Google these days? Yes, I understand that a couple years ago where it was so expensive to get home kit products, but now they're so cheap. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Commit to home kit is definitely the right move for you. <laughs> I'm just joking there, guys. I would never tell anyone to commit to one platform. I think if you are an iPhone user, I think you'll get the most benefit out of HomeKit. But as always, I've always supported other platforms. I suggest that you, you know, dabble in the other platforms, try them out. But if you're an iPhone user, you're going to get the most benefit, the most reliability, the most privacy, all from HomeKit. And I think if you're an iPhone user, you really should be using HomeKit. But if you want to mess with those other systems, go right ahead. There's some great stuff in Google. There's some great stuff in Amazon. There's smart things, Habitat, the list goes on and on. And if you really Really want to really understand smart home I suggest that you play with that other stuff and if you have the money and the time to do it definitely check those out but in my opinion home is the best um, it is growing faster than ever before and there's really some great stuff coming down the line so I really hope that you consider home kit if not Hope we can still be friends. And talking about friends, these are some awesome friends and Patreon members. If you wanna learn the benefits of becoming a Patreon member, definitely check out my Patreon page. And if this is your first time here, I hope you would consider subscribing down below and becoming part of Team HomeKit. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm out. No, nothing can break me.